Welcome to the big show. And today it's Dr. Geraldine Tan from the therapy room. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning. <laughs> so much sunshine. I know. Every time she's on. <laughs> hey, Jerry, I know it's past, but it's only two days past. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you and yeah. all the mummies, too. <laughs> Did you have a nice Sunday? I did. I was very blessed to have my boy wake up at 5.30. Wow. Mm, why? Breakfast. Yeah, why? <laughs> there, there. He cool made her breakfast. breakfast. Oh, he made you breakfast. Oh, yeah. Aww, how sweet of him. Yep, yep. So he, he did make some breakfast. Let's see if I can pull out a photo. And, and what did he make for you? Yeah, this is Sorry. the thing. Let's see the oh. photo. Of it's course, we're on the radio we're, now. We're, we're on radio now. Show it to us on Facebook, on Facebook uh, when we yeah. go on Facebook. Uh, but but it's okay. You can tell us what, you can tell what, us what, uh, he what he made you. What did he make? Oh, okay. I see. Uh, Blueberries? Uh, the ham, the bacon, bacon eggs. and eggs. So very boy, as you can see, very it's boy. not blueberries, there's no greens at all. <laughs> <laughs> at least the blueberries were there. <laughs> yes, and he bought the, my favorite one, which are the jumbo ones. Aww, Aww. that's that's very cool. Very but you cool. know, 5.30 a.m., why so early? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what What time did breakfast actually get to you? <laughs> oh, that's all right. That's all right. Prep time is crazy. <laughs> he was trying to figure out how, how to fry and fry the different things. You see. Yeah, it takes a lot of planning. If you want to fry a few things, it takes some planning as well. Okay, Jerry, just just teach him how to microwave everything. Hey, yeah. no, Wait, Jerry. Jerry, he he's he's not listening or watching now. How did yeah. it actually taste? Oh no! Why <laughs> must you ask that question? I really? want to know because when I used to cook it, my mom used to go, "Oh, thank you very much. And it was wonderful." It and then my dad would would turn to me and cook. Next year, can you not cook? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually quite tasty. Yeah. yeah. Well it's done. Awesome. Okay, so Jerry, speaking about parenting, what will you be speaking about today? Uh, the special needs population i think we made one big round we did speak about a few different populations so today i'm going to focus a bit on the parents and in particular hearing impairment wow, oh, wow. okay okay yes. that must be difficult because ugh, mm. Mm. i mean communicating when your child can't speak i mean mm. yes there's sign language and whatever but but still, it must be incredibly difficult. And so, what does it what does it mean for someone like who's a parent to be a special needs parent? Because this would fall under the special needs category, yes. Yes. So, I mean, they have needs. So it's just special needs. Just means that they have certain needs that we need to cater to. So I, I guess we need to start with just being a parent, right? Being a parent, there's so much anticipation. There's so much joy, and you know. No one signs up to be a special needs parent. Mm. That's what, you know, I, I realize because many times we sign up to be a parent and we have that journey of, you know, whether it is the we, we conceive or don't conceive. But when we do, we, we want everything to be like, okay, mm. that children to be healthy, right? So every parent's dream is for the child to be healthy and happy. And then you find out something like um, there's a chromosomal defect or there is an issue. So different needs would be like um, autism. We, we spoke about mm. that. Like Downs. Um, we, we haven't really spoken about that, but, you know, we touched on it. Cerebral palsy. Mm. Right. And the lesser, lesser discussed one would be the visually impaired and the hearing impaired. So mm. I felt a little bit of light from those areas. Mm. Right. We'll continue to talk to uh, Dr. Geraldine Tan from a therapy room uh, on thebigshow.tv. Meantime, here's Nelly Furtado on The Big Show. I'm like so, Jerry, we were talking about, and you mentioned this, the joy oh. of, of having the child, and then you realize that something isn't quite right. Yep. That yep. must be... I can't find another word other than devastating for the parent. Um, I mean, the first thing is just shock, pure shock, right? Because it's unexpected. Mm. You you don't go around planning that, okay, I, I'm preparing myself that my child would have needs. Mm. 
So the, the shock of finding that out and having to reconcile all the pictures and images of parenting in your head mm. because we all have expectations. And, you know, um, uh, the, the types of activities that you might or might not be able to do with your child or have to do with your child. Mm. So all the changes that ha- has to be made in the instance you find out, right? Or all the loss. So uh, one thing that I uh, like to do with parents sometimes when I realize that they are in, uh, they have been living in denial, is to help them to grieve over a parenting um, uh, image that they have mm, and can never can never uh, do perhaps you know especially like parents with um, children with cerebral palsy but but jerry how if we're talking when we're focusing mainly on hearing impaired yes. this is not something you realize when your child is born mm. it's mm. much later mm. on mm. Mm. So there are uh, the genetics that play a part and sometimes you discover that there is a uh, um, uh, hearing loss. So you know the little infants, they go for a hearing test on the second day after mm. they're born. Uh, and sometimes it's because of um, fluid built up uh, mm. and they, you need to go back for another testing. But some of them genuinely from uh, day one might be hearing impaired already, Mm. right? Mm. Uh, Some of them uh, develop over time. It could be, uh, you know, build up of fluid. Some people are more prone to it. Um, It could be genetics. It could be medical also. Medical like uh, meningitis, Mm. medical like different sort of medical conditions that may lead to hearing loss. Mm. Mm. So you see, many of us take, uh, you know, giving birth to a healthy baby for granted. Yes. Mm. You know, yes. Uh, but, you know, if, if, if you've just given birth, and I, I think, I mean, you, you mm. know this, mm. Angel, because you're a mom. Um, my mom has told me this before. You know, the first thing she did when she delivered, you know, my brother and myself ten was fingers to, and check, ten toes. Yeah, <laughs> to check the baby and yep. to pray that, that, you know, that everything is, is, is yeah, fine. fine. Yeah. Everything yeah. Is, is, is good, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we watch movies and, and, you know, everything seems so smooth, yeah. right? Mm. Uh, but um, I think, you know, we should, we should all be thankful. I mean, mm. especially the moms and the dads who are tuned in mm. who have, you know, healthy children. children. Yeah. True. You know, we're all miracles. True. No, absolutely. You know, uh, absolutely. Whether, whether or not, uh, um, you know, we, we come out completely healthy or, or otherwise. Yeah. Um, it's, um, it's, it's a miracle. Yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah, I guess w- what I'm saying here is, um, you know, we should be very, very thankful uh you know for 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 everything that we have yeah. you know we take a lot of things for granted we do we do mm. uh, i i think you the know. one thing that michelle and myself realized when we had our kids was yeah they're a miracle they're also a gift yeah mm. they're a gift they're a very special gift yeah and and if you can keep that in mind i think that helps yeah but you know jerry i mean you did mention earlier on some people i mean it's genetic right um they're born with uh, be, being um hearing impaired but what about people who lose their hearing mm. later later on maybe, maybe an in illness their, or yeah. a, or an maybe, accident maybe in their their teenage years or or, or something yeah. like that yeah so, that would be harder for the parents right it would be uh, difficult for both the parents and the child. So next week we probably look at you know um, some of the needs of special needs children. Today we focus on the parents, and again you know all the emotions right from shock to trying to want to find the best sort of care for their children. You know uh, you can see parents just scarring the. The, the island and the wall for the best sort of treatments for their children because they just want the best for their children. Um, you know, uh, sometimes there there is guilt. Oh, actually, this is a big one. 
Mm. A lot of parents feel very guilty. Mothers feel very guilty. Um, I passed it to my child. I did something to my child. Uh, I didn't look after my child properly, and they that so much guilt weighs on to them um, that you know sometimes they they don't know who to turn to and don't know who to tell because they think it's their fault and they live in isolation. What mm. kind of advice do you give to to you know a parent who feels that way? It is their fault. Mm. Well, there's always a community, mm. you know. So the first thing we want to do is to help them understand that they are not alone, that they do not have to bear the entire weight of that burden on their shoulders. Yeah. How do these communities work? Um, I don't know. I I know they are they are like a support group. But mm. everybody with the same pain, everybody yeah. Yeah. with the same anxiety, everybody yeah. with, you know what I mean? Is it like? It like, sounds depressing. Is it like what we we see on 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 TV? Mm. They sit in a in a circle, in a circle, and they speak about their experiences. But I guess it helps because they feel they 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 realize that they're not the only people going through it. Yeah, and that they mm. learn from somebody else's experience because. Uh, uh, I know the red card. I can see it. Um, <laughs> okay, we'll continue this um, on Facebook. Uh, no, on air. I'm sorry. TV. We have Dr. Geraldine Tan from the therapy room with us, and uh, we're talking about hearing impairment this mm. morning. Yeah, uh, and you were asking. I, I was saying that these support groups. I mean, you mentioned support groups, Jerry, and I was just thinking yeah. the people with the same worries, the same anxiety, the same, the same feelings of depression, the same feelings of guilt. How does a support group work? Because it just, it's like everybody is suffering. Because Jerry was saying, uh, uh, you know, some parents, uh, because their kids are hearing impaired, they feel guilty. Yeah. They feel like it's mm. their fault. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Well, the support group is not to stew in <laughs> your yeah. emotions, mm. right? That's not the intention. The intention is to help you to understand mm. that your emotions are valid that your emotions are important and that's what the support group is there for mm. and sometimes you don't realize that there are other options because you are only looking at your own pain mm. you don't realize that there are other options to work around certain things or and other parents are your resources so the support group is to support each other and I suppose with, like with any support group, uh, everybody is coming in at a different point in their lives, mm. right? So mm. some are at the just at the beginning, some have had it on for a few years. So everybody would be able to offer something new to each other, right? Yes. So they and and they would look for resources. They know where the resources are, and we can talk about it in a little bit. I think also the guilt comes a lot with embarrassment, embarrassment of that my child is different. So when you're in that support group, it also helps you to understand that, yes, there, there may be some differences, but my child is not different. Mm. Every child is unique. Yeah, because this embarrassment sometimes um, occurs when you are in a community that do not quite understand. So it happens for any sort of needs, any sort of disorder, where uh, perhaps your family members, your relatives, your friends do not understand because they don't have that experience that you are having or they don't have the knowledge and awareness that you know you are going through or the, the other parents who share the same experiences go through. Mm. Um, to us, I guess, hearing impairment is a very simplified uh, thought that it's just you can't hear. You know, it's different levels of not being able to hear. Some have completely lost their hearing. Some have different percentages. Are there different types of hearing impairments? So uh, we spoke about the genetic, the medical, you know, the fluid buildup, uh, which often occurs in children. Mm. Okay. There are different levels, which is the slight uh, slight hearing loss, you know, um, these ones can be easily corrected with the hearing aids. Mm. And then the mild 
um, hearing loss, which are, you know, normal face-to-face -face conversation, they would be able to kind of manage. Then you have the moderate, severe, and the profound hearing losses. Yeah, I'm not an audiologist, so I'm not going to go into each mm -hmm. one. <laughs> Cannot misrepresent anything. So the audiologist would be the best people to go to to help you. Um, and, and again, that's another resource. Another resource would be your speech therapist mm. can help you. Okay. Yeah. okay. We'll talk about the speech therapist on TheBigShow.tv. You're tuned in to The Big Show. Yeah, so Jerry, uh, you were talking about, you were about to start on the speech therapist uh, that parents can't see. Oh, it's, it's one of the resources that the okay. parents can use. Yeah, so we're, we're just looking at resourcing the parents today. Many different um, uh, professionals that you can go to, you know, so you have your support group, you have your audiologist, you have your speech therapist. And of course, before all that, your pediatrician will be the wonderful person to hold and walk along with you. Jerry, mm. just let me ask a question. This is sheer ignorance. Just very briefly, audiologist, speech therapist, what's the difference? The audiologist looks at the, the whole uh, hearing and, and whether there are losses, uh, whether your ear can catch the different tones, different pitch, you know, because uh, this is so complex, right? The brain that we don't realize that so many things um, uh, are need to occur before we actually hear anything. So there's the inner ear, there's the outer ear. There's the mm. <laughs> and I think we take our hearing for granted yeah. because I have, I mean, especially with us, we yeah. sit here four oh, hours with our, with our headphones mm. on and just the everyday person on the street, everyone is plugged in these days, you know, whether they're AirPods or wired headphones or over the ear headphones. And I, I a lot of people don't realize that as soon as you lose each one of those sensors or a single sensor in your ear it doesn't come back no it doesn't mm. it doesn't grow back it doesn't it doesn't rejuvenate and you know you get you get your sense of hearing back so i think we should be careful with the volume at which uh, oh, we are listening to things at you know because we're consuming so much information audially interesting that you say that because i started my career as a club dj mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i've mm -hmm. lost 20 percent hearing in my left ear because yeah. of that yeah. because of working but because your ears are so big that's uh, normal uh, <laughs> <laughs> so mean 20 percent you know? that's like 120 to us. if we lose 20 percent of our hearing you know we won't be able to hear very clearly but you with 20 percent loss you're still oh, as dear. sharp as a dog ah. he probably can hear a dog who's <laughs> These are the people I work with, yes, Jerry. Every day, every day. Good thing we have a short week this week. They brighten your life and make They do. Easier. Can you take off your headphones for a while and show everybody your satellites? Oh, your satellites are so weird. I, What did I say? Satellites? Oh my goodness. You I mean, your ears, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jerry, jokes aside. Um, okay, so Jimmy. as a parent, uh, you found out that your child is losing or has lost uh, their hearing. What should, what positives should they focus on instead? I mean, every child is beautiful. We just established that, right? Mm, yeah. So I think we need to focus on the strength of the children. Every child has strength. So it doesn't mean that Oh, oh, there are some limitations. That's the end. That's not true. So one one of the things that uh, you know we are doing this month is uh, the therapy room is collaborating with uh, Listening Lab and Canosian School. So Canosian School, uh, you know, is for the hearing impaired. And I saw that video is so beautiful. They actually, you know, uh, cater for both hearing and. Uh, hearing impaired and normal hearing children so they have integrated learning mm. wow very yeah, cool because not all of them uh have like profound hearing loss right so they still can speak they still can do their work um and you know if we only look at the strength of the children then we would be able to tap on it if we just mull over the limitations you know we would just we would put them at a disadvantage when they are not at a disadvantage. Mm. Mm, yeah. So, Jerry, you know, I mean, parents with um, hearing impaired mm. children, mm. Um, 
I mean, Angel mentioned different percentages, right? Mm. Some people are completely uh, uh, um, impaired. Others are impaired at, at you know, different, different level levels. levels. Mm. Yeah. Do, yeah. Parents, um, do parents have to take up, like, a sign language course? Yeah, so we look at, uh, you know, parents being our partners. Mm-hmm. So they are in the entire journey. And it's also a learning for them about, you know, the... The different ways to connect because connecting with that child might be slightly modified in it's not different it's modified so how can we help them to connect better um, what are the needs of the child so we are not just looking at the special needs but what are the needs of the child because don't forget that at every developmental stage the child have needs mm, 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 mm. yeah so that's where i come in so all the psychologist comes in and we look at the developmental stages because it still occurs but we need to look at it and modify some of the approaches Right. And how do you deal with the hearing impaired um, kids? I mean, can you sign? No. So we don't like, like, uh, like, um, you know, what we say, right? Those profoundly uh, 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 hearing impaired will have a different set of issues from those that are uh, slightly impaired and they would be frustrated. So the different mm. frustrations, we deal with that. The emotions, we deal with that. Okay, so Jerry, uh, we're speaking about uh, hearing impaired children, but most, more importantly, we're focusing on the parents of yeah. hearing impaired children. You yeah. spoke about the needs of the children, but what about the needs of the parents? Like, how can parents help themselves to be able to help the children? Mm. So, you know, that's why I talk about all the resources. Mm. If we look at the emotional needs of the parents, they are also very frustrated. So remember, parenting has no manual. Mm. And then you, you put, you know, all the needs of these children and they get even more frustrated. It's like, what can I do? Or what is normal? Uh, one thing the parents love to ask is, what is normal? So is my child throwing a temper normal? Mm. You know? And sometimes, you know, we, we, we chat with them and realize, oh, it's just a teenage behavior. Don't worry about it. It is not out of the norm because they don't know where the uh, boundary line is or they, they don't know what the benchmark is because so much material is out there for the normal teen, but not enough for the teen with a need. Mm. Mm. Jerry, um Asians, I'm not saying, I I am generalizing, Uh, I apologize if I offend anybody. Asians are not the best people at showing emotion anyway. So Mm. when you have a hearing impaired child, does that mean that the parent needs more physicality when it comes to showing emotion? Because there's no tone of voice, The, the child can't hear that. How how do you help parents develop that? Okay, so that we we when we look at hearing impaired, we think of the more profound ones. Mm. But those with slight hearing impairment and mild one can actually hear you. Mm. Mm. Okay. So not hear ones would turn off their hearing. Yeah. <laughs> Just to suit them. <laughs> and some can tell from your expression as well, right? Yeah, they, they, they can. They can. And they can feel. They're more, they're very sensitive um, mm. children. But it's quite funny when I hear some of them tell me, you know, Auntie Jerry, sometimes I don't want to hear anyone. I just turn it off. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> and why not? Yeah. Wow. Yes, How many times have we gone, shut up? <laughs> yeah, true. Right. Okay, hold on. Every time I want traffic. Good morning, Singapore. Welcome to The Big Show and the Big TV. We have Dr. Geraldine Tan with us from The Therapy Room. Good morning, Jerry. For those of you who are listening to us, if you are parents of a hearing impaired child and you have questions, you can always go to our Facebook page and uh, put your questions down. We'll try and deal with them this morning. Speaking of our Facebook page, mm-hmm. I just want to give a big shout out to all the people who are commenting right now. Frida, Madeline, Joel, mm. Mark, Tamanas, everybody's listening as well. Good so morning, morning, everyone. Morning. What Good are morning. they saying? What Maybe are they we should saying? read some of the comments. Well, Madeline, Madeline has come out and said uh, that parents really need to look after their kids. Uh, she rec- recommends buy uh, parents buy volume limited headphones 
to protect their ears, she recommends uh, decibel levels of no more than 85. Now, I say this because my daughter, Nicole, is very particular. You guys may remember when we were at the wedding. Yeah. The minute the music started, Nicole put on noise-canceling headphones over her baby. Okay. Oh, right. Oh. Okay. Straight yeah. away. Yeah. Straight mm. away. And uh, Annika does have noise-limiting headphones. Oh, that's So no matter how she hits the volume on something, it only goes to a certain level and that's it. That's I because see. Grandpa's voice was so loud. <laughs> <laughs> he was on stage and he was, uh, you know, having a good time with all of us. But I think all headphones should should come with a limit, <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, yeah. they, they absolutely should. I don't think there's Your any does, reason. No? It, n- my phone, like for, for me, if I put my volume up, my, mm. my, my screen will pop up and say, it's going past the maximum yeah. but then you're just like yeah but I really can't hear you yeah. know and then you still go up yeah, but, no point so, yeah. Yeah. but you know Jerry don't don't you agree that these days you know I mean compared to when we were growing up like when I was growing up you know my mom just told me okay huh? so I got you this Walkman huh? you don't blast the music okay because mm-hmm. if you blast the music you'll just go deaf Yes. That's yeah. what she said, yes, yes, right? Yes, yes. And yeah. and uh, that that stuck in my mind, yes, right? So yeah. I I always made sure that it was at a comfortable level. Yeah. And sometimes, uh, you know, just if it's a, a rock song, up. shook lah. You know, <laughs> you just up it a little bit, but but not to to the point Deafening. where you're gonna go deaf. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, that was always what they said, right? Yeah. You're gonna go deaf. And yeah, <laughs> and it was so simple back then, right? Okay, if you if you continue to listen to your music at this level, you're gonna go deaf, and yeah. that would scare us enough, enough. for yeah. us to yeah. to to be careful. Yeah, but that's these true. days. Is, it's like you know it's a different world we live in are people stupid or what no <laughs> <laughs> also like okay a- we're not talking about that kind of disability uh, Sean yes oh no very quick I just want to say a shout out to teenagers mm. who go for concerts I mean now nothing, nothing but back yeah. then concerts I used to go for a lot of concerts and I used to stand in front of the speakers yeah just got shook but yeah. it's very bad for your hearing now if you call me I won't answer you know because I can't hear <laughs> what were even, you thinking Sean no, I wasn't I mean, thinking that's the problem you think la. about it don't even think about uh, concerts Concerts, even in clubs, you see yeah. kids yeah, standing yeah, concerts, next to the that. massive speakers, you know, just so that they can feel that vibration. I feel that as soon as I start to feel the vibrations in my eardrums, I'm like, this is way too loud. Yeah. I'm getting out. Well, yeah, Ray, Ray has a term for it. He calls it auditory delusion. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good see, these, these are the kids uh, whose parents never said those words. Yes. My mom You'd be never surprised. Oh, she never did? Never. Oh. Wow. Yeah. I learned it the hard way. Okay, Jerry, like you were talk- you're talking about uh, hearing and speech impairment I, more often than not correct me if I'm wrong they come together mm, so there are different uh, sort of comorbid disorders that can can come with the hearing disorder right so that's one thing that we are going to cover during the talk mm. uh, so we are going to have a talk on the 21st of May. So that's one thing that we're going to cover also. Yes, it can comorbid. So that's why we work as a team because it's so hard to kind of filter out who takes which which parts of it. And is there anything else, uh, for want of a better word, other spin-off sort of disorders that come when you have a hearing impairment or a speech impairment that parents can expect will happen to their kids? Uh, No overt ones you know um but they might be a little bit more uh they might have more difficulty learning languages okay so the mild, uh, the slight ones or the mild ones still can learn languages they still can speak pronunciation might not be so good or the language when they learn language they need to put in a bit more effort so definitely more frustrated so when parents look at their children you know they might feel frustrated also mm. because they see the children putting in so much effort but not obtaining the grades you know our Singapore parents always look at grades right mm. you know they, they, they get frustrated that why are why is my child not attaining the grades even though they put in so much effort right mm. we're talking about hearing impairment with dr geraldine tan from the therapy room i hope parents uh, who have hearing impaired children find today's session you know extremely useful uh we'll continue to talk talk to jerry uh, on the big show.tv meantime he has no mercy where do you go on the big show raising the radio game on 1fm 91.3 so, Jerry, uh, hearing impaired, I understand if it's a degree of hearing impairment. I'm going to talk about normal schools. Um, I know if there's a degree of hearing impairment, a kid could probably go to a normal school and, 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 and deal with it. Um, but with complete he- hearing impairment, 
Mm. With the ability to lip read, mm. can a mm. child go into a normal school? Uh, so the school needs to be aware and the school needs to uh, prime their teachers. Not every teacher is able to do that. Ah. Uh, so sometimes they speak very fast mm. or they don't articulate their words very well. Um, so the child finds it very difficult to lip read. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So then they would be, well, the school can give them materials beforehand. So these children, many, many, many of them are very hardworking mm. and they try very hard. Yeah, but um, now with the mass, um, oh my yeah, goodness. it's <laughs> impossible. Well, Difficult, yeah. I mean, we can talk about it next week, but it is so, so, so difficult. Yeah. Wow. I'm reading. I'm. I'm reading your lips very clearly because the sun is shining <laughs> so nicely oh. on. Oh, on, oh yeah, on your she's lips. blushing. Yeah. Jerry's blushing. <laughs> you got a lovely, what, lovely what, sunlight. What, what, do that to me. <laughs> always, right? He always. Yeah, he yeah, always yeah. does this. Another question coming through on our Facebook page. Um, Parents who are deaf, parents who 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 who, who are uh, who can't speak, yes. uh, can they have normal children? Is this hereditary or isn't it? It can be hereditary, or it uh, or it can be acquired mm. over time. If it's acquired over time, they still can have normal uh, children with mm. normal sight and normal hearing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I like how she corrected what you said. Yeah, you cannot say deaf, no. <laughs> no, you cannot. Yeah. No, she said. He said, uh, "Normal." Can you have? Uh, can normal, normal parents, parents or no, can, normal can deaf, children? Deaf and but even deaf do. people don't use deaf anymore. Do they not use the words no. deaf and mute anymore? Yeah. No, right. Hearing so, deaf. That's hearing very interesting speech. because I, I have, I have a, a deaf friend, mm. and when okay, I say again, you're again. hearing impaired, he init- he comes straight back to me and goes, "I'm not impaired. I'm deaf. <laughs> I can't hear at all." Yeah, but that's I him, lah. Yeah. But then, so, uh, so I need to. Which is which? Then is the correct thing for me to do? Call him deaf. Right? Actually, I have a better word. Maybe his name is deaf. I have a better word. I have better words. Just what? say can't hear. Can't hear. No, but Jerry, come on, seriously. What is the politically yeah. correct term? He to is one hundred percent deaf, and he says I'm deaf. I'm not hearing impaired. Well, he really says it, he sees impaired as as partially per- percentage deaf. of right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So yes. which is correct? No. As long as the person is comfortable, yeah. I, think, I think it's very difficult. That's why we, we are having conversations. We have open conversations because they will tell us, you know, um, what is comfortable for them. So, for example, mm. right, my eyesight, I'm wearing contact lens, right? But my eyesight is just horrible. I'm blind as a bat mm. if I take out my contact lens, you know? Yeah. But I will tell everyone I'm blind. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't say. But you, you wouldn't use the term, "I'm visually impaired," because that's a Whoa. whole different thing. You're just making a joke. Yeah. Yeah. Like this guy actually says he's deaf as a doorpost. Yeah. That's what he says he's, about himself. I think. I think what we're talking about Morning, now Julian. is the is the generic term yeah. Yeah. that we have to use for for the hearing yeah. impaired. Yeah, it could be. Hey, could Jerry, be. how come suddenly you went backwards? Huh? It's like, as in, like suddenly you're smaller. Right, because her screen yeah. became smaller because Julian came in. Oh, yeah. but, oh, I see. but I'm still the same size. No, you're not. You've become smaller as well. No, so you are Jerry the is the size. smallest. Jerry is the tiniest. Jerry was the biggest. Ah, yeah. there we go. <laughs> there. Now, now we can see the sunshine on your beautiful <laughs> face. Ah, blush again, blush <laughs> again. But the, the sun is still there. See, if I go lower, it's like right in my eyes. I hope you're wearing your sunscreen. <laughs> Jerry, be- Jerry, before we round this up, we're talking about parents with hearing impaired kids. But just, mm. it extends beyond that. Mm. It's grandparents, mm. it's mm. it's cousins. They all have to deal with yes. this child. Yes, yes, yes. So how do they do that? It, do do is it recommended that the whole extended family learns uh, sign language no. and and no? You know what? Treat the child as an any as a normal other kid. Child. Yeah, as, yeah. An, as any other child. Well, yeah. Why would we want to? try and um, infantilize the child in any way and right? highlight yes. and highlight the things that they yeah. can't do yeah yeah, yeah. So we want to encourage growth mm. not 
highlight the disability, right? Mm. So yeah, treat the child as any other child. Yeah, it's even much, when it comes to discipline, right? For sure. It's much like yeah. the guy that opened up Dignity Kitchen. He has all these people with what we see as disabilities, but what he yeah. sees as abilities. So he only focuses on what they can, can do. do. Right, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. whether they're speech mm-hmm. impaired, hearing yeah. impaired, visually yeah. impaired, or even have one arm. I don't know if he yeah. has those, but he focuses on what they can do, and that's yeah. that's all he sees. And, and just for those of you listening, I, I used to work with a guy uh, who, who was... And I will say it because he used to use the word blind. Mm. And, you know, we used to we used to really treat we would watch a movie and go, hey, did you see that? Wow. OK. And he would go, yes, because he had listened to it and seen it in his mind. In his, yeah. mind. So there you go. The theater of the mind. Of the that's what that's what yeah. radio right? is. Yeah. And he would always yeah. tell us, I'm no different from you. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing yeah. is I can't see. Yeah. yeah. I'm no different. So mm-hmm. that, that whole treating them normally, I think, is a very important message. Treat mm-hmm. them as you would anybody else, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And if anyone wants more information, parents, family members, friends, want more information, 21st of May at 7 p.m., um, you know, uh, we will be putting up the poster. Kenosian School, uh, uh, Kenosian School will be hosting the, uh, a, a talk for parents. So, yeah. 21st, 21st of May. May. 21st okay. of May, yeah. 21st of May. It's on virtual, so it's on Zoom. So anyone can come and join us. Awesome. Okay, fantastic. Awesome. Any last words, uh, Jerry? <clears throat> Re- remind yeah. us closer to the date once again, uh, Jerry. 21st yeah. of May, right? Yeah. Um, yes, next, yeah. week. next week, yeah. Okay, okay. Yes, I have something to say for <laughs> everybody. Must, this one must have impact. One. There is a voice <laughs> that doesn't use words. Listen. Oh. Wow. That doesn't use words. Listen. Listen. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Awesome, it's Jerry. For everyone. It's for everyone. I didn't hear that. There is a voice that doesn't use words. Okay. Listen. Wow. Mm. Well Love done, it. Jerry. That was awesome. Thank you, Jerry. Oh. Hi, Julian. Bye, Hi, Jerry. Jerry. <laughs> 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 I want to be to you. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I'm enjoying a part of your your talks anyway, so it's all good. <laughs> Thank you for enjoying, and I'll see everyone next week again. All right. Bye. Yeah. Take Bye, care. Bye. Stay Bye. safe. Bye.